Hey guys, hello, welcome to our, uh, our tax webinar, um, which is especially for international students in Australia. Um, my name is Robbie Keswick. I am the campus manager in Sydney for Australian Pacific College and English Unlimited. Uh, and if you're following our Facebook pages, you will probably have seen that we are, or maybe checking your emails, you might have seen that there are lots of webinars that we've been doing the last couple of weeks and there are more coming in the next few weeks. They are about, well, about improving your English sometimes. They can be about design, marketing. Um, then there are some general ones about life in Australia. And I think that this is one of those ones. Um, at the end of the webinar today, there will be a Q&A. Um, so if you are participating on Zoom, because of course some of you are watching on Facebook, but if you're participating on Zoom, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A button. There's a chat button. Don't use the chat button. Use the Q&A button. And you can ask any questions for Brian, who is... Uh, going to be presenting our webinar. He's one of our accounting trainers here and a wonderful, wonderful man, and you're going to learn a lot. Now, obviously, tax is very complicated. It's a very complicated subject. There is a lot to learn, and this webinar will have a lot of information for you. So if you don't get everything first time, that's okay. Um, try and pick up as much as you can. We're gonna give a good overview today of how, how tax works in Australia in terms of what you need to do as a student. Um, but we're going to be uploading this to YouTube tomorrow and you'll get an email um, to, uh, if you've signed up for this webinar through Eventbrite, you're going to get an email uh, with the, uh, the, both the webinar uh, and some links that we're going to be giving you in the, uh, in the webinar as well. So uh, without further ado, I will uh, introduce to you our, one of our favorite, well, he's one of my favorite people. Uh, and uh, he's uh, one of our favorites here at APC. Uh, he's uh, our accounting trainer, Brian Nee. Brian, I might get you to turn yourself on if you're there. Hey, hi. Hey, good Brian. Afternoon. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Now, we're going to start with a poll. Um, so this is the first uh, question for, uh, for you guys to answer, and it'll help us have a sense of who you are and what sort of information you need. So the first question for you is, when did you arrive in Australia? Did you arrive in Australia in 2020? Did you arrive in Australia in the second half of last year? Did you arrive before that? Uh, maybe you're not in Australia, right? I mean, that could be some of you there too. All right, check out those numbers, Brian. So we have a lot of people coming in who actually arrived. We have a couple of newbies here. We have a lot of people who arrived before July 2019, which is very yeah. interesting, um, right. which means this might not actually be their first uh, end of financial year, right? Yeah, so maybe this is the first time for them to do the tax return in Australia. Yeah, all right. So um, with that information, I'm going to disappear and I'm going to leave you with Brian. And um, as I said before, Q&A button, bottom of the screen. If you want to ask any questions, we'll get to them at the end. Yeah, thanks, Robbie. Okay, so, okay, based according to the poll, most of the students come to Australians before July 2019. And welcome to Australia. Welcome to APC and welcome to our tax webinars today. My name is Brian Nee, the accounting trainer at APC. I'm here today to give you some basic information you may need to know when you prepare the Australian tax return. My presentations will cover the following topics. I will briefly explain the difference between tax farm number and the Australian business number first. And secondly, I will tell you how to determine the residency status for tax purpose as an international student. Thirdly, I will give you some basic ideas you may need to know when you prepare for your tax return. And then I will let you know how to apply for the Medicare levy exemptions if you are eligible. Last but not least, we are going to meet our virtual friend, Alex, and help him with some questions about the taxation. So everyone, are you ready? So now let's get our tax journey started. In the daily life, we can use different reference numbers such as the passport number, the photo ID numbers to prove your identity. So for example, if you are talking to the student care at APC, normally you will give them your student number and once the student care officers get the student number, they will just type your numbers to the system and get your information and answer your question. And the taxation systems in Australia, there is a reference number that can play the same function. This number is known as tax file number, in short, TFM. 
This is a very, very important part of your tax and the super records. Every time when you go to talk to the government department about your taxations and the superannuation, or ask them the questions about that, you must give them your tax form number before you start the question. Because as you know, we may have the piece of peoples with different, or we may have the peoples with the same name, or maybe the same date of birth. But tax for numbers is the exclusive numbers, it's only for you. They will help the government persons to get the right information to the right people. All right? So it's very, very important. And also, your tax for numbers will be yours for life, which means if you change your name or if you change your job, move to the other state in the Australia or go overseas, you will always get the same tax fund number. They will not give you a different numbers if you change your name or change your jobs. You will have one tax fund number for life. And also, when you start to work in Australia, tax fund numbers becomes compulsory because if you do not have the tax fund number, you may need to pay a higher tax and in addition, you may not be able to apply for the government benefits. You cannot lodge your tax returns online. And if you need an Australian business number, you cannot get it if you do not have the tax file number. So this is why everyone, if you are going to work in Australia, you must have the tax file number. To get the tax file number, the application is very, very straightforward. Just go to the Australian taxation office or in short, ATO's website, you can make the online application there because you meet the conditions for the online application because you are a foreign passport holder. You have the international student visa, which is the eligible visas for the online application. And also when you make the applications, you are in Australia. Just because you are meeting these three conditions, you can make the application online. And within 28 days after you launch your application, the tax file number will be posted to your Australian address as mentioned in the form. So once you receive the number, please make sure to keep it in the safe place. Because as you know, this is an exclusive number that is only for you about your tax and the superannuation records. And there is another reference number that can prove your identities as well in Australian taxation system. This number is known as Australian business number, in short, ABN. However, unlike the tax fund number, not everyone is entitled to or needs ABN when working in Australia. Because this number is only necessary for the people who is going to run the business in Australia or working as a contractor in Australia. Not everyone. So for example, if you just do something for hobby, you will not be given the ABN if you go to apply for that. Why? Because you are not going to run the business. It's just for your hobby, not for the business. All right, so it just means the ABN is not necessary for everyone. However, it is still important if you are going to run the business. In order to apply for the Australian business number, you can go to Australian Business Register or ABR website. This is actually the subpart of the Australian Taxation Office website. You can just go to the ATO website. They will redirect you to the ABR website after you click the business button. All right, so this is part of the ATO website. So if you are good luck, all right, after you enter your personal information to the application form, if you are good luck, you will be given the ABM straight away on the screen after you submit your application forms. But in most of the case, you will wait for 28 days to get the certificate showing your ABN. All right, so uh, no matter if it is the tax file number or Australian business number, both numbers will be very, very important for you if you are in Australia. So when you receive that, please make sure to keep it in the safe place. So this is the difference between the tax file number and the Australian business number. All right, as you know, tax file number is compulsory for everyone but Australian business number is only to the people who is going to run the business in Australia. After you get the tax fund number, you will go to looking for the jobs. And when you start a job in Australia, your employers will normally ask you to fill in this form. This form is called tax fund number declaration. 
you will go you will provide your personal information including your tax phone number to your employer this information will be very very important for the employer as well because the employer will use the information from the declarations to work out how much tax they are going to take from the payment and the pay to the ATO on your behalf. And actually, I receive a lot of questions, you know, from my accounting class about the tax fund number declaration. Because most of the students will always ask me, Brian, um, why my employer take higher tax from my payment than others, even if we have the similar situation? The answer is just, I will just simply say, because the information you provide in the tax fund number declarations is different. All right, because you know, nowadays, your employers will no longer using the calculators to manually calculate the tax in for you. Because once they get information from the declaration, they will put your answers to the payroll software or accounting software. And then the tax amount will be automatically calculated by the system according to the information you provided. So this is why when you fill out the tax fund number declaration, you have to make sure every questions will be answered correctly, or will be fit your situations. And normally you will have 28 days to complete your uh, tax fund number declaration and give it to your employer. If you don't do that, your employer may take the tax from the payment with the highest rate. So once your boss asks you to fill in the tax fund number declaration, this is the first things you need to do because you have to give them back in 28 days. Otherwise, they will take higher tax from your payment. So please keep it in your mind. And in order to uh, understand your tax position, it is also important to determine your residency for tax purpose first. But some student may ask, I'm holding the student visa. Does that mean I am the foreign resident for tax purpose? Can I still be treated as the Australian resident for tax purpose? The answer will be depending on different factors, all right? Because in Australia, we have a lot of factors to consider to help us work out your residency status for tax purpose. But first of all, you have to be clear that the residency for tax purpose is completely different with the same concepts for migration or visa purpose. What does that mean? It means if you come into Australia with the student visa, you may, be you may still be treated as a tax resident or Australian resident for tax purpose, even if you are not the Australian citizen or permanent resident. Because as I just told you, there are a lot of factors to consider to determine your residency. But the most important factors we are going to think about is if you have already created a tie or if you already established a linkage to Australia, the taxation office will mainly looking at your intention to stay in Australia. What you are doing, if this is, you know, the, the same Australian will do as well. So for example, you, you are here to do the study. You are here, you know, to looking for the jobs. You also apply for the club or gym membership. So everything you are doing, it's just the one to prove that you are going to stay in Australia, you are going to live in Australia. So in such case, if you already create a tie, if you already established the link with Australia, you can call yourself as the Australia resident for tax purpose, even if you are not a citizen. So now I will tell you, how can we as the international student to determine the residency for tax purpose? According to the ATO's guideline, if you are the overseas student who is enrolled in a course in Australia that lasts for six months or more, you may be considered as an Australian resident for tax purpose, even if you are holding the student visa. Because you can get actually, in fact, you can get a lot of tax benefits if you are the Australian resident for tax purpose. This means you will pay the tax on your earnings at the same rate as other residents. And also, you will be able to entitle to different tax benefits in our system. So for example, you will be entitled to the tax-free threshold, which means if you are the Australian resident for tax purpose and earn less than $18,200 a year, 
you don't need to pay any tax. It's good point for us, isn't it? You don't need to pay any tax if you earned $18,200 a year. But you know, if you are the foreign residents for tax purpose, every single dollar you earned in Australia will be taxed. They do not have the tax-free threshold. And in addition to the tax threshold, if you are the Australia residents for tax purpose, you, can, you will be also entitled to some tax offsets and the lower tax rates than the foreign resident. So this is a very, very important thing. So you need to make the decision, you need to make the judgments before you start to do the tax return. Because if your residency is, is different, the tax treatment, the tax rate, the tax benefit will be completely different. So it is very important for you to consider your status first before you fill out the tax file number declaration, before you start to prepare your tax return. All right. However, you cannot just simply say you are the Australian resident for tax purpose just because I'm going to enjoy these benefits. As I just said, you still need to consider a lot of fact factors to see if you already create and or established the linkage with Australia. All right, so this is a very, very important point you are going to know. Okay, I think, I hope everything is clear so far. And just a friendly reminder that if you have any questions, please write down your questions in the Q&A sections at the bottom of your screen. And I will be happy to answer your questions after my presentation. So now, let's move on to the tax return sites, the tax return parts. In Australia, the government who will assessing your tax returns is called Australian Taxation Office. And normally we just take the first letters of each word, ATO, you know, when we do the communications in our daily life. So if you hear ATO, which means this is the government body who will looking after your tax matters. And also the Australian tax return covers the financial years from 1st July to 30th of June in the following years. It may be different with other countries, which make start from 1st of January, which is follow the calendar years. But in Australia, the calendar year and the financial year is different. The tax returns is normally cover the financial years starting from 1st July to 30th of June in the next year. And normally, you can lodge your tax return by yourself. First of all, you can lodge your tax return online with my tax through my Gov account. You can just go to apply for a my Gov account first. And then once the account has been created, you can just simply link your my Gov account to my tax software. Okay? You can do the tax return by yourself online. This is the easiest and the quickest way for you to lodge your tax return. You can also complete your tax return in the paper form and mail it to the ATO. But you need to expect a longer time for ATO to process your tax return. Normally, it may take around maybe a month all right, or even more. But if you lodge the tax return online, maybe it will only take one to two weeks. In most of the case, it will just take one week. The system can be processed your tax return and release your refund. All right. But if you need some professional advice, all right, or if you need some professional knowledge of your tax return, you can also use a registered tax agent to prepare and lodge your tax return for you. But no matter what method you are using to prepare and lodge your tax return, the most important things you need to remember is, if you need to complete your tax return, you must lodge it by 31st of October. All right, this is the deadline. If you, submit your assist, if you submit your tax return late, the ATO will apply the penalty, all right? It's very, very high penalties for every year. You know, it may be around, you know, $880. It's very high penalties for each tax return late. So please keep in your mind about the deadline. If you need to complete the tax return, you must lodge it by 31st of October. But if you are using the registered tax agent, the, extent, the, the due date, the deadlines of your tax returns may be extended. All right? Sometimes it may be extended to February, March, or May, depending on your personal situation. But if you ask for the registered tax agent, the deadlines may be extended. So I will recommend you, if you are going to looking for the tax agent, you can just ask them about the deadline because they will see the deadline after they add you as their clients. 
All right, so, but for most, for the general information, 31st of October is actually the due date for the tax return for nearly everyone. And also in Australia, not everyone is required to lodge the tax return. Even if everyone has, for, has, has to fulfill their tax and the reporting obligation, but not everyone is required to lodge the tax return. So I will give you four common scenarios in this slide and tell you when the watch situations we are going to lodge the tax return and when in the watch situations we are not required to lodge the tax return. So now I will go through each scenarios one by one. So scenario one, it is you are the Australian resident for tax purpose and you earned less than $18,200 and you didn't pay any tax during the financial year. In this case, you do not need to lodge the tax return, but instead you are required to lodge a non-lodgement advice to ATO because you need to inform ATOs that you won't be lodging the tax return this year. And you have to make sure they will update your lodgement status in the ATO systems from not lodged to not necessary. If you do not lodge, this advice to ATO, your status will be always not lodged, all right? So the purpose of the non-lodgement non advice, the first purpose is just to inform the ATO, you, you, you won't be lodging the tax return. The second purpose is you want to make sure they will update their system, all right, to the, about your status from not lodged to not necessary, all right? So you must do that, all right, if you are not required to lodge the tax return. Scenario two, which is very, very similar with some scenario one. You are still the Australian residence for tax purpose. You earned less than $18,200. But this time you paid some tax during the financial year before you prepare the tax return. You already pay some tax in some times during the year. In this case, you need to lodge the tax return, even if your income is below $18,200. The reason is because your income is lower than the tax-free threshold. Because as you know, if you are the res tax resident, if you earned less than $18,200, you don't need to pay any tax. But you already pay some tax during the year, which means you can get this tax back after you lodge the tax return. If you do not lodge the tax return, if you still lodge the non lodgement advice, you cannot get the return back. You cannot get the monies back. All right, if you want to get this tax back in the scenario two, you must lodge your tax return. Only the tax return can help you to get the return back, to, to get the tax back. All right. And scenario three is if you are the tax resident and you earned more than $18,200. In this case, no matter if you paid or did not pay the tax during the year, you should definitely lodge the tax return to the government because your income is higher than tax-free thresholds. And the scenario four is if you operate your own business as the sole trader with the ABN, do I need to lodge the tax return or not? The answer is you must lodge your tax return no matter if you earned more than or less than $18,200. Even if your income is below, tax-free threshold, you still need to lodge your tax return to the government by the due date. Why? Because you operate a business with a sole trader in the ABN. So this is the point, all right, to tell you why you are required to lodge the tax return. So based on these four scenarios, we will see in the watch situations, we are not required to lodge the tax return. Only when you are the Australian residence for tax purpose, you earned less than $18,200 and you did not pay any tax during the year. If you meet these three conditions, you just go to lodge the non-lodgement advice. For the other situations, you must lodge the tax return to the government by the due date. When you lodge the tax return, you, must, you, you need to do two things, all right? Actually, when you do the tax return, you don't need to worry about the calculation. You don't need to worry about uh, how to calculate the tax, how to get the tax, because this is the software's jobs, all right? This is not our jobs. Even if you prepare your tax return in the paper format, 
you still just report the income and the expenses. You don't need to do any calculation. Once you mail the tax return to the ATO, they will calculate for you. All right, this is not the things you need to worry about. But when you prepare the tax return, you have to do two things. The first thing is you need to report all of your accessible income. The accessible income is actually how much you earned during the year. So for example, the salary you earned from working, the bank interest you earned from your bank account, or if you run the business as the sole trader, you will receive the money from, the, from your customer. This is your business income. This is actually all the incomes you need to report into your tax return. So this is called assistable income. And at the same time, you can also report, or technically speaking, we call claim. You can also claim any expenses that are related to your occupation. Different occupations may have different types of the deductions to claim. But the golden rule is you must have spent the money yourself. All right? If the expenses have been already paid by your employer, you cannot claim these expenses in your tax return because it's not paid by yourself. Secondly, the expenses must be directly related to your job, not for your private use. All right? So for example, I'm doing the accountant and I purchased a piano for my personal use. Can I claim the piano in my tax return as the accountant? I think everyone will say, of course not, right? Because I don't need to play the piano when I prepare the tax return for my clients. I don't need to play the piano so you know when I talk to my customers about the financial statements because it's not related to my work. So we cannot claim it in our tax return. In order to claim the deductions, you have to make sure your expenses will be directly related to your work play, to your work. And the last but not least, you must have a record to prove your expenses. You cannot say, oh, on 1st of July, I spent $1,000 to buy a computer. You cannot just simply say something. You have to use some black and white records such as tax invoice or receipts to prove your expenses. All right, to prove your expenses. So this is the golden rules we need to follow when we are going to claim the deduction. So after you report your accessible income and the deductions, deductions can also be understood as expenses. After you report the accessible income and the deductions in your tax return, the systems will automatically calculate the taxable income in your tax return the taxable incomes will be calculated as a difference between the accessible income and the allowable deduction. This is the net income on which you are going to pay the tax. Actually, the tax, the tax rate will not apply to the accessible income. They will apply to the taxable income, the net income you are going to pay the tax on. And as you just know, sometimes you may already pay some tax during the year before you prepare the tax return. ATO will compare the tax amount you have already paid with the tax we calculated in your tax return to make the final assessment. If you have paid more tax during the years, then you need it. So in another word, to put it simple, if the amount you paid during the year is more than the amount in your tax return, the ATOs will give you the extra money, will give you the extra money in refund. This is called tax refund. All right. So this is the things you need to know. In the watch situations, I can get a refund. If you paid more tax during the financial years, then you need. All right. But if you do not pay anything during the year, you will not have any refund because you haven't to pay anything during the year. If you have paid more tax, then you need it. You will get a refund. But if you have not paid enough, then the ATO will send you a tax bill and you will need to pay the tax. But of course, after you lodge your tax return and when you receive the tax bill, they will give you a certain amount of the time to make the payment. They will not ask you to pay for the you know, tax bills immediately. They normally will give you a few months all right, to make the payment, depending on when you lodge your tax return. So this is actually the basic information you need to know 
when you do the tax return, all right, the only things you need to know is you have to report all the accessible income and you have to claim all the allowable deductions that is directly related to your work. And then you can leave the calculations to the system. They can do it automatically after you report your income and the deductions in the tax return. And also in Australia, Australians also pay for Medicare from the income tax return at 2% of your taxable income. So I just let you know a good news first for our international students. The good news is most international students in Australia are not required to pay this 2%. Why? Because you are not entitled to the Medicare. So I think everyone has the student insurance as part of the visa application. But you know, if you go to see the doctor, normally you still need to pay out of your pocket for the consultations in the clinic over the counter, isn't it? You still need to pay first. You may go to your insurance companies to get some money back, but you still need to pay for the consultation in the clinic first out of your pocket. But you know, Australian is different. Every time when they go to see the doctor, they just present because we have a green card, which is called Medicare card. Every time when we go to the clinic, we go to see the doctor, we just present our green Medicare card to the counter first. Then they will record everything and then they will ask the payment from the Medicare from the government. All right, I don't need to, we don't need to pay for the doctors, you know, over the counter in the clinic. But it doesn't mean it's free. Why? Because Australians pay for the Medicare from the income tax return, not from the clinic, all right? Not from seeing the doctor. We just pay for the Medicare from the income tax return. But for the overseas student, because you still need to pay for the consultation, you still need to pay for the doctors out of your pocket. So this is why you are not, all right, eligible for, you are not entitled for the Medicare. So this is why you are not required to pay for this 2% in your tax return. Uh, however, you must, uh, uh, you must apply for a Medicare entitlement statement to ask for the exemption. So you can get this Medicare entitlement statement from Service Australia. This is the, another department all right, in Australia who will looking after the Medicare levy exemption. So the Medicare entitlement statement will tell you the period during the financial year. You were not eligible for Medicare, as I just said, because you do not need to pay for the Medicare just because you are not eligible for the Medicare. So the Medicare entitlement statements will tell you the period, all right, in the financial years that you were not eligible for Medicare. Once you receive the Medicare entitlement statement from Service Australia, you can claim the Medicare levy exemptions in your tax return. But before you lodge your tax return, before you claim the exemptions in your tax return, you must get the statements first. Uh, you must get the statements from the Service Australian first. So this is why we will recommend you to apply for the Medicare entitlement statements as early as possible. The reason is during the peak season from July to November, it will take up to six weeks or longer for Service Australia to process your application and then give you the Medicare entitlement statement. And also, as you know, we have to wait all right, until we receive the statements to lodge our tax return. So you will be recommended you know, to apply for the Medicare entitlement statements as soon as possible, all right, if you are going to claim that. And also, the, another important thing you need to know is you must get a new statement each year if you want to claim the exemptions because you may already get the exemptions in the last year or before, but it doesn't mean you will get the exemptions every year. You must apply for the statements every year when you want to claim the exemption. All right. So this is about the Medicare levy exemptions. You can actually make the applications from the Service Australia website to download the application form. And you are also required to provide a certified copy of the, photo, of the photo page of your passport and also your current visa, all right, to the Service Australia. You can post the application form. You can also email it to the Service Australia. All the details will be available in the application forms if you download it from the website. 
So this is about the Medicare levy exemption. And the most of you will not be required to pay for that, all right, which is the good news for us. Okay, I hope everything is clear so far. All right, and before we go to meet our Alex, I have a question for you. So Robbie, could, could you please have a poll here? Yeah. So my question is, how do you apply for a Medicare entitlement statement? You can apply through the school, from ATO, from Service Australia, or through your OSHC provider. This question is to see if you're listening. <laughs> And it looks like most of you are, right? So yes, it's most good. of the answers oh, are oh, correct. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, most I, of you get the correct answers. I think it's worth just mentioning. So in that last slide, we're talking about the Medicare levy exemption. A levy is like a sort of tax and exemption means you don't have to pay. So that's, that's what we're trying to, to explain there. There's this little tax that as an international student, you don't have to pay. But of course, you might need to get this Medicare entitlement statement. Now, here are the results of the poll. Yes, that's great. All right. So, yes, most of you get the correct answer. You can get the Medicare entitlement statements from Service Australia, not your school, not the ATO, not your, o, not your OSHC provider. All right. So you will need to get these statements from Service Australia. Okay, that's good. That's good. So now let's go to meet our virtual friends here. Our friend is called Alex, all right. He arrived in Australia with a student visa and he is currently studying a course at APC for one year. And currently he get a job in hospitality. So his employer asked him to complete a tax fund number declaration, but he is struggling with two questions in the form. The first question is about the residency status for tax purpose. And the second question is about the tax-free threshold. He is currently struggling about these two questions because he has no ideas about which box should be selected. So let's help, let's help him out. So yes, so you will see the next poll here. So could you please tell Alex or could you please advise Alex which box should be ticked? So he's a, a student, he's doing a course for one year. So yes. is he an Australian resident for tax purposes or yes. not? And he wants to claim the tax free threshold. Is he able to, if he's an Australian resident for tax purposes? Yeah. It's his first job. That's also an interesting point too, I think. Yeah, that's right. Because this is the first and the only jobs Alex currently have. All right, yeah. All right. So let's have a look at these results. Yeah. Okay. The result is good. Yeah, it's good. And most of you is actually provide the correct advice to Alex. All right. So now let's have a look together. So as, as you know, Alex is currently studying at APC's for one year's course, which is more than six months. And based on the ATO's guideline, if you are the overseas student who is enrolled in a course that lasts for six months or more, you can be treated as an Australian resident for tax purpose. So for question eight, we need to tick an Australian resident for tax purpose. All right. And as the resident for tax purpose, Alex, is able to claim the tax-free threshold, which means if Alex earned less than $18,200, he does not need to pay any tax. So this is why he must inform this information to his employer to say, oh, I'm the tax resident and the first $18,200 will be tax-free. Because you know, once you see tax-free threshold, this is the only terms applied to Australia resident for tax purpose. If you are the foreign resident for tax purpose, you don't need to worry about, you know, the tax free threshold because every single dollars you earned in Australia will be taxed. Tax free threshold. This is the only word. This is the only terms that will apply to the Australia residents for tax purpose. Because if you earned less than $18,200, which is the tax free threshold, you don't need to pay any tax. You must tell your boss. Or about this status. But as Robbie just said, this is the first jobs of Alex. 
But how about Alex get the second jobs or third jobs or even more jobs during the year? What kind of the answer should be ticked in question nine? Because as you know, if Alex get, for example, three years in the same financial year, all right, the conditions is the three jobs in the same financial year, of course, Alex will go to complete the tax fund number declaration three times, all right, for each jobs. So let's say these jobs I'm currently showing you, I'm currently showing you on the screen, this is the first jobs of Alex. So if Alex get the second jobs or third one, for question nine, which box should be ticked? All right, this is the tricky thing here. Because generally speaking, generally speaking, you can only claim the tax-free threshold from one payer at a time. What does that mean? Which means in the same financial year, if you get three jobs, you can only tick yes in one of the jobs you have. If yes, this box has been already ticked, in your first jobs, the rest of two jobs, you must take no, because you can only claim the tax-free threshold from one payer. If you take yes for all the three jobs, it will cause you to pay higher tax in the year end when you prepare the tax return. So this is the things you need to remember. If you get more than one jobs, you can only take yes, all right, in one jobs tax fund number declaration. For the other two jobs or for the rest of the jobs, you must take no because you can only claim the tax-free threshold for one payer one, one time or right, once, once a year. All right, so this is actually the things all right, about the tax fund number declaration. So that's good. Alex actually is happy because you give him the correct information and help him to complete the tax return declarations. And then he will pass these declarations to his boss in 28 days. All right, so that's good. And also on the 1st of July, he also go to the, uh, the service Australian website to apply for the Medicare entitlement statement because he is going to claim the Medicare levy exemption in his tax return. And after around six weeks, he received the Medicare entitlement statement to prove that, that the statements to tell Alex that you are not eligible for Medicare which means you are eligible for Medicare levy exemption. Because you know, once you, if you go to apply for the Medicare levy or Medicare entitlement statements, you know the wording sometimes will, most of the students will feel a little bit confused because the statements will say, you are not entitled to the Medicare, which means you are eligible for Medicare levy exemption. All right, so just, just be careful about the wordings they have. If the statement say you are not eligible for Medicare, means you are eligible for Medicare levy exemption. You can claim that in your tax return. So once Alex received the Medicare entitlement statements, so now he can go to prepare his tax return. The situation is during the year, Alex received $30,000 from his boss as the gross salary before tax salary. And his boss, his employers, already paid $2,184 on his behalf to the ATO during the year. And at the same time, Alex spent um, some money to buy the uniform with or clothes, clothes with the company logo. He also went to attend, attend some work-related seminar or conference or in the hospitality areas. And he paid for all these expenses by himself. And also he has the tax invoice to support these expenses. The total expenses he spent by himself is $1,000. So this is the situation Alex has. So now he is asking you how much tax he is going to pay. So as I just told you, told you when we prepare the tax return, if you are going to prepare the tax return by yourself, you only need to do two things or maybe three things to be exact. The first thing is you can claim the Medicare levy exemption, all right, in your tax return. You can just, they will say, are you eligible for Medicare levy exemption? Because you already have the statement. So you can take yes. Yes, I am eligible for Medicare levy exemption. This is the first thing you can do. The second thing is I'm going to record my accessible income to the tax return. In this case, my accessible income is $30,000, which is the salaries that I earned. 
the third things you need to do in the tax return is I need to report how much expenses I am going to claim to reduce my income, all right? The conditions is these deductions must be related to my jobs, all right? So in this case, the deductions is $1,000. So this is the jobs you are going to do when you prepare for the tax return. And after this information has been entered to the system, your taxable incomes will be automatically calculated as the difference between the assessable income and the deductions, which is amounted to $29,000. After considering the tax rate and the tax offset, Alex is going to pay $1,352 as the tax. So this is actually the actual tax Alex is going to pay for this financial year. But do you remember? His boss has already paid something for him, isn't it? Because his boss already paid $2,184 on Alex's behalf. All right, he or, his boss already paid $2,184 during the year for Alex. So you will see well, how much Alex is actually need to pay only $1,352, which means his boss, Alex's boss, paid more, all right, than Alex needed. This means Alex can get a refund because Alex has already paid more tax during the financial year than he needed. So as a result, he can get $832 back after he lodged the tax return. All right. So, um, as, as I just told you, you can only get the refund after you lodge the tax return. But generally speaking, after you lodge the tax return, it will take around one to two weeks for ATO to process your tax return. In most of the cases, it will take around one week. Right? But normally the official, you know, the time frames will be one to two weeks. But in most of the case, you can get the refund in one week. And you also need to provide your bank account details in the tax return to let the ATOs know where they can forward the refund to you, all right? So after one to two weeks, you will receive a document called Notice of Assessment from ATO to prove your lodgement status. And at the same time, ATO will forward $832 to Alex's nominated bank account, all right? Because you, what the, the things you need to know is, nowadays, ATO will not issue you the check all right, they will actually forward the refund to your nominated bank account. They will only issue the check if they find the account is not working or the account number is wrong. All right, but in most of the case, currently, they will ask you to provide your bank account, all right, to get the refund if necessary. So after one to two weeks, Alex get the notice of assessment. He also get $832 in his bank account, then he's happy. Case closed. All right, this year's tax return has been done. Then we can just go to the next year's. So based on these case studies, you will find if the tax return preparations actually is not that difficult, right, than expected. So if you just have the income or if you just have some worker-related deduct deductions, actually you can still do it by yourself. It's not, you know, much ex difficult than expected. But if you need some professional advice, because you know tax is actually, we, we have some taxation law, you know, to follow, to meet, all right, when you do the uh, tax return. But if you need some professional advice, if you need to make sure everything is correct, we will still recommend you, and you can still use the registered tax agent, all right, just depending on, you know, if you can do it by yourself, or if you need the uh, tax agent service, you know, to prepare and lodge your tax return. But you will see, after this case study, you will see actually the preparation of the tax return for most international students is not such difficult as expected, isn't it? Okay, so case closed. And now let's sum up some key points for my presentation. So in my presentations, we learned together that every individual working in Australia need to have the tax fund number. If you do not have the tax fund number, you may need to pay a higher tax. And if you are going to run your own business or start working as a contractor, you must register for ABM. But the first things you need to do is you must get your tax fund number first. Because if you do not have the tax fund number, you will not be given the ABM as well. 
And when you start working in Australia, you need to complete a tax for number declarations in 28 days. Otherwise, your employers will take tax from the payment with the highest rate. And as the international student, if you are enrolled in a course that is, six, that is more than six months long, you may be treated as the Australian resident for tax purpose. And you will see if you are the Australian resident for tax purpose, you will have a lot of tax benefits, such as the uh, tax-free threshold, or at the low tax rate, then the foreign resident. And most, of, most international students are not required to pay for the Medicare, Medicare levy, but they must apply uh, Medicare entitlement statements if they want to claim the exemptions in their tax return. The most important thing is you must go to apply for the Medicare entitlement statements if you want as early as possible because it will take around six weeks to process. Second thing is you can only get the statements first before you lodge the tax return. You cannot just simply lodge the tax return you know, before you receive the statement. You have to wait for the statement before you lodge the tax return. Thirdly, third thing is you have to get the new statements every year if you are going to claim the exemption. So this is the three things you are going to keep in your mind when you are going to apply for the Medicare entitlement statement. And also when you prepare the tax return, you just need to report your accessible income and the deductions correctly. Actually, they have the linkage between the income and the deduction. All right, the deductions you can claim must be related to your work. And this information will help the system to work out the taxable income and also the tax you are going to pay. Okay, so that's bringing me to the end of my presentation. But before we move on to the next stage, I have one last question for you. So let's have a look at the last questions. Because as you know, now it's the tax time. All right, it's 12th of August is the tax time. So what do you need to do now? All right, this is the multiple choice. You can just select the answers you think it's relevant. You can select the one, two, three, or even all the answers if you think they are relevant. And that fourth option there, so we have four options. One is apply for a Medicare entitlement statement. If sub submit your tax return or sign up with a registered tax agent before October 31, you have go to the ATO website to see what deductions you may be eligible for. And then the last one is make sure that your MyGov and tax, my tax accounts are linked. That's what it should say, that those accounts are linked. And I think we might, we might wrap it up because all of you very smartly, I think, are, um, are saying, I mean, really all of them, uh, all yeah. of them are things you should be That's considering. Right. Um, yeah. Having at, a look least, at. at least every option has been selected. <laughs> yeah, this is the good things. Yes, well done, everyone. That's, that's good. Actually, you know, now you can do everything, all right, as shown in the, on the screens. That's good. Well done. So that brings me to the end, and thank you for your attention. So before we move on to the Q&A sections, I will just hand over my speech to Robbie first. All right, to Thanks, keep... Brian. Um... I can see, so now at the beginning of the presentation, we pointed out that we have a Q&A button and you guys have been using that Q&A button like crazy. So we'll try and get through as many questions as we can, but it, it probably won't be anywhere near as many as you've asked. Yeah. Um, I'll try and select a couple of interesting questions. Uh, so I, I've, I've told you I'm the campus manager in Sydney for APC and English Unlimited. Uh, if you're watching right now, you might be an APC student, maybe you're not. Um, so just to tell you about who we are and what we do, uh, we're a vocational college uh, for all students, but we have a lot of international students. Uh, and these are some of our courses you can see in front of us. Um, Brian is from accounting. So you can see that down the bottom right hand corner there. Uh, we also have design, uh, business, leadership management, travel and tourism, hospitality, and uh, we have English as well. We have English Unlimited is our sister English school. Um, so we have all of that stuff uh, for you. Brian, if you go to the next slide for me, please. Thank you. And so at the moment, um, because of, of course, this situation with coronavirus, uh, we've reduced our fees. In fact, I think we were the first school in, I think the first international college in Australia to reduce fees for international students when we realized this was all gonna go crazy. Um, and we've done that. So if you would like to enroll or you'd like to extend, um, it's only $1,000 per term in VET for most courses. As you can see, design and TESOL are a little bit more. Um, and so this applies in the period we are in the virtual learning environment. So 
Um, yeah, so that's that applies. These fees apply through until the end of this year for term studies. So it's a thousand dollars per term. So for example, if you signed up now, it would be term four would be a thousand dollars, and then the, the the fees would change um, in two thousand and twenty one. And it's only $100 a week for English as well. So that's my information for you about that. Let's get into the Q&A. Yeah. Um, if you have any information, if you have any questions about anything at all, you can go to apc.edu.au, our website. That's apc.edu.au. And go to live chat, talk to people there. They can always help you. Um, let's get into some of these questions. My God, there are so many questions. <laughs> all right. Um, first one, I missed my tax in 2019. Can I do it in 2020? What do I do if I've missed a tax return, Brian? Yeah, because uh, actually, if you missed out the tax return in 2020, uh, 2019, you can still lodge your tax return. Um, and also, you know, in, in, in most of the case, in most of the case, you know, ATO will give you the special consideration. It, it, it just means they will not penalize you if you uh, missed out one tax return. But, you know, it's still case by case. But uh, I will recommend you, if you missed out your 2019 tax return, please do it immediately. But I believe you may not be able to use my tax to lodge the tax return online by yourself. So um, you may um, go to, you may use the paper format or you can just ask the tax agent. But um, you, you can just go to have a look first, you know, if, if you have the MyGov account and the link to my tax. But based on my knowledge, normally my tax software will only help you, will only allow you to do the tax return for the current year. All right, so if you are going to prepare the 2019 tax return, you may need help from the tax agent. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's a pretty common problem, I think. Uh, that's, you know, don't worry, it's not just you. Lots of people do that, so yeah. there's, um, there's always a way around it. Uh, got a question here. 18,200 tax-free threshold, is that for ABN or TFN? Uh, this is actually for everyone if you are the Australian residents for tax purpose. So which means if you have the tax fund number and the ABN, the total incomes you earned from tax fund number and the ABNs are $18,200. You still do not need to pay any tax, but you need to prepare the tax return because you have the ABN. Yeah. All right. So next one, what happens if we lodge uh, after, after, so it's October 31st, right? And by that time, you either have to lodge your tax return or you have to be registered with a tax agent. And then the uh, yeah. deadline can be pushed back a little bit. What happens if you don't do that? Yeah, because, you know, if you do not lodge your tax returns by 31st of October, first of all, I will tell you, your lodgement status in the ATO's database will be not lodged. All right. And then, um, and also, generally speaking, my tax, this software will always allow you to do the tax, you know, before 31st of October. But if you fail to lodge the tax returns on time, you may go to looking for the registered tax agents to help you lodge the outstanding tax. But what I will tell you is your status will be shown as not lodged in the ATO's database. So they may penalize you after you lodge the tax return, or they may contact you about the outstanding tax returns you have in your account. All right. So I've got another question and I suppose I'll ask them both separately, but uh, mm. how can I inform the ATO that I earned less than $18,200? Yeah, this is the good questions because actually you can inform the ATO if you earned less than $18,200 by the ways of the non-lodgement advice. All right, the form's name is called non-lodgement advice. This is the form. You can just simply search for this word in the ATO's website and they will give you the PDF file, all right, to, to complete the non-lodgement advice. And also the easiest and the quickest ways for you to lodge the non-lodgement advice is using the MyGov. So if you have MyGov account and the link your MyGov account to the ATO apps, the application, they will give you a button to lodge the non-lodgement advice. So on that, the, the non-lodgement advice, if you have, let's say, for example, you worked and you earned, I don't know, $10,000 mm, yeah. and your employer took some tax from you, you don't want to do a non-lodgement advice, do you? You want to do a tax oh, return. Good. This is the good question. It just means if your boss already takes some tax from you, you must lodge your tax return because you may get the money back. Yeah. All right, if, if, if you do not pay any tax during the year, you can just simply go to lodge the non-lodgement advice if your taxable income is less than $18,200. All right, I'm gonna ask you one question for a lot of people who ask questions about okay. deductions. And like, for me personally, I mean, I'm a manager at a vocational English school. There are deductions that I can claim. Yeah. Um, 
there are deductions and it really changes, you know, occupation to occupation, right? Yeah. So, um, but I mean, so I have some questions here. Can I deduct an Opal card top up payment? I have a couple of interesting questions and I might get you to talk specifically about this. So I'm an accounting student and I'm working as an accounting assistant. So let's mm. say you're at APC, you're doing accounting um, and you work as an accounting assistant. Can you claim your fees as uh, work expenses? Um, yeah, yeah. How does that work? Yeah, because you know, the, the actually as Robbie said, you know, different op occupations may have different types of the deductions to claim. What you have to make sure is the expenses you are going to claim will be relevant to your work. They will help you to earn the work. So for example, if I'm the accountant, if I'm the accountant, you know, so I can claim any expenses I spend that is relevant to the accounting thing. So for example, if I um, go to see my customer, all right, I drive my car to see my customers from my workplace, then I can claim the car expenses. I can claim the travel expenses. But you cannot claim the travel from your home to clients, or you cannot claim the tra uh, travel from your home to your workplace. All right. So you can also claim, you know, if you're doing some study that is relevant to the accounting that help you to maintain your accounting knowledge, you can claim that. Um, and also, uh, if you attend some seminar, you attend some conference, or if you work from home, you know, there will be a lot of deductions to claim. But the golden rules is you must make sure the deductions will be relevant or I will be directly related to your work. It just means if you do not do the accounting jobs, you may not be able to spend this money all right, to pay for that. This is right. the golden rules you need to remember. Thanks, yeah. Brian. I'm just looking, I have this enormous list of questions. I'm so sorry we can't get to all of them. But <laughs> we're, we're, it's already four o'clock, so we're just about out of time. I'll give you one or two more. I'll see if I can find cool. another couple that are... Uh, that uh, apply to a lot of different people. So there's a couple of questions here from people. They say, um, okay, I have TFN and, a and, and ABN, right? Yeah. So, and everyone, I, I understand you can't get an ABN without a TFN. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, actually, 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 it depends because, you know, if you get the ABN for sole trader, you must have your tax fund number first. Yeah. I think that will be applying to most international students who are yeah. watching. Most international students with an ABN are a sole trader. Yeah. So let's say, for example, you have some income from a TFN, you worked at a cafe or something, and then yeah. you have some income from, a, from an ABN, maybe you're working in construction or as a cleaner yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, do you, how do you sort of do both of those at the same time in your tax return? Okay. This is the good questions. Actually, you know, first of all, you are right. It just means both incomes must be reported in your tax return. So the income from your tax fund numbers will be reported as salaries and wages in question one in the tax return. The income question one is about the salary and the wages. This is the place where you can report your incomes from your workplace, from your tax fund number. But all the incomes coming from your ABN will be reported in the separate place, which we call it as the business schedule. All right, so there is a section that we call it as the supplementary sections in your tax return. This is for business schedule. You need to report your income from ABN in the business schedules in the tax return. They must be reported separately, but in the same tax return, if you run the business as the sole trader. All right. I think um, there are so many questions that are un unanswered and I'm so sorry because we have so many really great questions. A lot of them are very specific. Um, and so I think I would definitely recommend that if you have a lot of specific questions about, uh, about tax, and about your tax and you're concerned and you're worried about it, um, it it's probably a good idea to go to a registered tax agent um, because they have lots of experience dealing with all of these questions. Um, you know, can I, can I have, apply for this deduction or this? Um, a lot of them will be very specific, not only to you personally, but to your occupation. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really good questions in there. A lot of them about deductions actually. Um, and so I think we might have to, um, we might have to wrap it up there because we've already gone too long. Um, Brian, thank you very much for, uh, for presenting and for giving us uh, lots of advice. No. Um, and we, we need to have you back because we have so many questions. We might just have a session, which is sure. just a, a Q&A with Brian about all of this sort of stuff. Because <laughs> yeah, it's, of it's, course, um, because it's, it's completely understandable because this is very, very related to our daily life. And yes, it's, it's, it's okay if you have any. Fantastic. Thanks, Brian. So if you applied, uh, if you signed up for this uh, webinar through Eventbrite, we're going to send you an email tomorrow. Um, with a link to this talk on YouTube and um, a couple of interesting links that you'll need. Um, I've posted one in the chat. If you have a look at the chat window at the moment, you'll see a, a link to 
some deductions that you can claim. It's on the ATO website. Um, but thank you very much. Time to go. I'll do it like our Zoom wave to say goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for coming. Thanks for coming, guys. Uh, have a lovely afternoon and uh, see you next time. Yeah, see you. Bye.